I asked, who is it? Which of them is the judge? Hmm? Then they told me it was you. I said, ah, it can't be. It can't be, it can't be that one. The one I remember can't be the one who is the judge. It can't be, maybe someone else. So he tells me this to my face two days ago. And I laughed along with him because I knew what he was saying. I knew myself without gold. I knew it very, he was a very laid back person, very quiet. You know, my own things, myself and I, you know, myself and I, you know, this whole thing of, I don't know, national transformation, <laughs> please. National transformation, what does that have to do with me? You know, that was my life. Wake up in the morning, go work, come back, sleep, eat, go work again, and the kids fine, is happy, is happy fine, that's it. And I was so satisfied. Hmm? Until the bishop woke me up, he said this one. Can someone have peace in this world? <laughs> Can someone have like sort of like you? Know, he laid back for like five minutes, you know. No, it's more than that. To whom much is given, much is. Yes, yes. yes. The Lord has blessed me. I told you in Psalm 16:5, He has assigned me my portion and my cup. Yes, the boundary lines are falling for me in pleasant places. However, however. The Lord expects me to be his vessel in this time where I'm blessed. Mm. Mm. And so I looked at my relative and we laughed together about the film myself and I said, if only you knew that the change you see in me is my Lord. Whoa. But there was no there was no time for the we just laughed, I said I laughed ah, and we left it at that. But I wished I had like five minutes so that I could tell him that. You see, the change you see in me is Christ in me. There is no other. There is no other. Yesterday I was at, um, I was telling Justice Mike, I was at um, visiting land. It's called the locust visit. Um, before you make a decision in land, you should go. Sometimes it's very necessary to go and see what they are talking about. So I went somewhere in, in, in one of, part of the city. And the warring parties were had, you know, they had drawn their lines and the the ones on this side, there were about fifty people there. Relatives, these are not strangers, these are these are relatives, brothers and sisters, different mothers, but brothers and sisters. Hmm. I looked at the situation, I said, God, you better come <laughs> to my rescue this way. Hmm? Come to my rescue. So he showed me something in the papers. And I asked him that, you see, you have said so much to the court, but you haven't told me how big this, this land is. How big is it? I mean, you've been in court since 2016, but no, none of you has told us how much land you want to get from your adversary. So how much is it? And they stood there with their lawyers back and forth, and no one could tell me. I said, none of you know how much this, where are we here? And I know it was the Holy Spirit who had led me to ask that question. Remember that has been in court for since 2016. So anyway, we went through it all, and I sensed a need for a certain level of firmness with them. Normally, I'm very well. Someone might. I'm soft spoken. Yeah, I, I hope so. I don't know. I am usually not hmm, very high up there. But in this situation, I knew it required a firmness with both sides so that they knew where they stood. And it's the Holy Spirit who did it for me. You know, I know you see me standing here and you think, well, she's a judge, she has, you know, she has the ability to stand here and speak in front of most of the strangers. My friend, no, it is only the grace of God. The grace of God. Even with those people, you know, these strangers, and they look militant. We have situations where they attack you. They attack the judicial officer when you're there. They do something to you. So I don't allow any of them to stand behind me. I say, uh, you stand where I can see you. You stand so that at least I have where to stand when I'm exiting. I'm, I'm saving myself, you know? But the, the, the courage to stand in front of people who are worrying, who are that angry, and speak to them with firmness about justice and, and what is right in the law still comes from our Father above. 
he is the one who strengthens us in all these things. So I realized that when you have a workplace altar, you strengthen there, you have your family altar, you strengthen there, your extended family, community, the church one, you're sort of covered on all fronts. You're covered on all fronts. I mean, where would the devil pass? I'm thinking, guys, so where are you going to pass now? Where will you pass? But we've had situations where the altar has died. It has dimmed. Um, when I leave the place, somehow it doesn't remain. That, that is the issue that I'm having right now. When I leave, sustainability of the altar becomes difficult. And that's the challenge that we're having right now. It's like, and you know with altars, the priest is important. The person who, is, who will take charge and stand in the gap and say we have to meet, is important. So perhaps Bishop, you, you, you think through that, that, that issue. But when we leave, it seems we take the altar with us, which is not good, yes. That place also needs an altar. But so far, so good. So far, so good. I want to give God all the praise and all the glory. I, I have been a judge, like I said, almost four years. It's hard to believe. He helps me to do my work. Judgments are not easy to write. You have to sit down and make sure you cover all the points that the parties have presented before you and make a decision. Take away land from somebody, give it to the other one. Okay? Then they find you on the street, you know, with your one police guard. <laughs> what do you think protects you? Yes, because you see, one person will go away upset. They will go away upset with you. Right? But you have to make the decision. You have to have the courage. So, what am I saying? Before I call my senior brother to come, Please establish workplace altars in your workplaces. Read the word of God, praise the Lord, encourage each other, and cheer each other on. You know, we don't only talk about work at these altars. We pray about people's father's illnesses,